Kel Josh here, and this is my review of Toy Story 3 by Pixar. Do I really need to give this review at this point? Of course it's amazing. It's made by Pixar. When have they ever let you down? Oh, okay, maybe Cars, and I didn't really love Ratatouille, but those, even when I don't love them, are still better than every animated product out on the American market at the moment. And I just, I really have virtually no complaints. I hate to be ecstatic here, but this is an amazing movie. I, okay, you know what, that's all, 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 uh... I'll qualify that. Let's just go through the regular review process. The story here is that Andy, Woody, Buzz, and the gang are all back, and Andy is going off to college. Obviously, he can't, he's not going to take his toys with him. Long story short, the toys wind up at Sunnyside Daycare Center, where things are not quite as they seem, as and anyone can guess from the trailer, that Fluffy Pink, uh, Fluffy Purple Bear is actually evil. And uh, particularly, I think the story works really well here because not only does it give you all that kind of warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feelings that at least people from my generation grew up watching these movies uh, does, but I think it really gives you a multi-layered story. And the only problem that that brings is that I think the middle portion, while still tons of fun, remains a little unfocused and doesn't really come th or come to one head until the conclusion, which, I, I mean, I, it's not, not really necessarily a problem, but uh, it... Just note that there is not as it's not as simple as the previous two movies, but I think it's a good thing, you know, because this movie is think made from a nostalgic perspective of uh, people growing up with these movies, and I think it's a great evolution that you can maintain this kids movie feel uh, for younger kids that have just recently seen the Toy Story movies and yet give it this multi-layered adult plot that people who have grown up with these movies can now actually appreciate and uh, really qualify and classify this movie as a great movie in and of itself in their eyes. Uh, I really don't have too many complaints. Um, the only things I really will complain about are uh, the middle pacing, like I said, maybe a little off, and uh, the fact that I didn't like some of the cultural gags they threw in, like Mr. Potato Head's eBay line from the trailer. That really just seemed like a line that made for the trailer. But I gotta give it credit, you know? I watch every Pixar trailer, and every time I say, that looks like crap. But, and I did the same thing for Toy Story 3, but as soon as I watched Toy Story 3, all of those things that I thought would not be funny and just look, frankly, groan-worthy, actually were just really, really great. It's particularly in context of the Ken, or Ken as kind of an effeminate doll works amazingly, and uh, Buzz's Spanish mode is quite funny. Not, no, not like gut and do, not gut busting, but honestly, the movie just builds up so much goodwill with you throughout it that it's easy to laugh with it. Even when the jokes aren't amazing, it's just a great, great ride. And uh, I just really can't complain too much. A lot of the characters seem to be repeating plot lines from the previous movies a little. I think that's just for it being... It is a kid's movie, so they can't tr tread too far. And they don't want to evolve the story too much because they want to keep that same feeling of the Toy Story movies. But uh, overall, you know, it's, it's new enough that you won't really notice it. Just maybe in retrospect, I guess. The characters have evolved somewhat, I gotta say. I really like kind of Woody's new stance, and uh, Buzz really doesn't get a whole lot to do. But what was her name? Oh, Jesus, this is going to kill me. The female Woody doll. I cannot believe I'm forgetting her name, but you know who I mean. Uh, has a great plot line there. I really liked how things reoccur with her, particularly her parallel with the villain, Lotso. And uh, speaking of Lotso, wow! What an evil asshole! He had a really fantastic backstory that, again, tied in really nicely with her plotline, her past, and uh, really made him stand out amongst the villains. I uh, really liked him a lot better than the Stinky Pete the Prospector in Toy Story 2, and uh, maybe better than the villain in Toy Story 1, though I honestly, I really like him. One thing I actually want to point out is that Andy... The human owner is actually given somewhat of a plot line here, and I really enjoyed that. You know, in the other movies, they're kind of just either hands you see off screen or just brief glimpses into their lives. And I think that actually giving Andy something to do and showing him what, uh, showing that, showing us what that is, really helps this concept of the world within a world that the original movie and the second movie too were going for. And uh, not to mention the fact that, again, growing up with these movies, that is actually near my situation. I'm in my fourth year of university at the moment, so I can kind of relate to that. Not that I am somewhat as creepily obsessed with toys as Andy, but this movie did make me feel really bad. Gotta say, wanted to drag that bin out of my closet. Anyway, I realize I'm really rambling here, so let's get on with it. The animation in this movie was really fantastic. You can definitely tell the improvements that they've made 
uh, a lot of the toys look a lot better, the eyes particularly, and uh, a lot of lines are much nicer, much more enhanced than they were in the previous movies. I find one of the biggest differences back when I reviewed Toy Story 1 and 2 3D double feature was that uh, Buster the dog in the first movie was basically just a red mat, where in the second one they kind of grew fur. It's kind of the same evolution here, where it's better, but it's not necessarily as noticeable. One thing that is really noticeable, though, is the design of the human characters. Does anyone actually remember the first Toy Story movie when you saw, like, all of the characters? They looked like weird, deformed monkey people. They, I mean, I realize it's understandable, because, you know, it's the first first full-length animated CG animated movie. Okay, I'll give it credit for that. And it's a fantastic movie, don't get me wrong, but wow, those designs were bad and really, really weird in retrospect, and uh, they definitely improved along that here. People are much are much more like the characters in Ratatouille, although maybe not as exaggerated, and I really appreciated that, because uh, yeah, just help with immersion more than anything. Um, one thing I do want to note is that I forgot to mention, there was a real sense of menace in this movie. Uh, between lots of really effective backstory and the climax, which is, well, fairly predictable, but really actually quite affecting, I really gotta give this movie credit for a kid's movie. It was a uh, it got your heart thumping a few times there. Action scenes are really well done in this one, too. Definitely give you more of that kind of toys in a real world danger, but uh, amped up a notch. Definitely amped up a notch. I think that's the best way to describe Toy Story 3. It's Toy Story 1 and 2, but amped up a notch. Personally, Toy Story 1 is still my favorite, but I actually like Toy Story 3 a lot more than Toy Story 2, even. So if you like Toy Story, go check this movie out. Oh, yes. I can't believe it. Almost forgot the sound. Now... Randy Newman does the soundtrack, he conducts it, as well as writes a few original pieces for it. And uh, the main song that he contributes to this, We Belong Together, is really good. Not maybe as good as some of his previous work, you know, You Got a Friend in Me or I'll Be Sailing No More, from Buzz's infamous, like, tr trying to fly to the window scene. But uh, really, is a nice capper. By the time the film rolls around, it really suits the mood, and it's fun to listen to on its own. The rest of the score is, uh, well, what can I say? It's a Randy Newman score. It basically mimics the first two movies, and, uh, well, they're very well at that. I was very impressed, though, by, uh, the number of genres that it manages to cross. The movie itself does this in, uh, a lot of the characters' different versions of stories, and, uh, uh for, I can't remember, was, but one of the, one of the other toy clowns in the movie, I can't remember his name, again, this is a very terrible memory, uh, kind of has a dip into noir territory, and there's like a western point at uh, western part at one point, and uh, all the music really shifts nicely for it, where it still it still sounds like a Toy Story movie, but just has enough of a twang of another of other influences that it suggests that genre, and I really appreciated that. You know, you don't you don't often find musical complexity in a children's movie. I mean, I understand musically Disney original Disney movies are fantastic, of course. But uh, more recently, you know, the music just seems so bland and generic, and it's really nice to hear something that actually tries. It might not be terribly different from the rest of the series, but honestly, the music was great there, too. I don't really like Randy Newman as an artist, but he does, does a fantastic job here. So, like I said, overall, if you are curious about Toy Story 3, go see it. If you're apprehensive about Toy Story 3, go see it. Basically, just go and see it. Although, if you haven't seen the previous two movies, God knows why you haven't at this point, then you probably want to watch those two first. If only because this really is more of a great trilogy, and a lot of the plot lines touch upon are much, much more affecting if you watch those previous two movies. The story here can stand on its own, but, you know, it's helped by the other two. In conclusion, yeah. Go see a Toy Story 3. I don't know how Pixar has done it, but they've crafted a second sequel that not only manages to live up to its predecessor, but also manages to avoid almost all of the pitfalls that sequels regularly fall prey to. God knows Pixar can do Toy Story 3 and uh, make it work. I don't know if Cars 2 and Monsters, Inc. 2 are going to work. I don't really give a shit about Cars, Inc. 2. I'll watch it. And uh, I can't wait for Monsters, Inc. 2. I think there's actually a lot of possibilities there. You know what I want? The Incredibles 2. Uh, you don't just bump all the characters up a few years and give them a new villain. That's all I want. That was an amazing movie. That's like one of my favorite Pixar movies, right after Toy Story. So, uh, yeah. I don't know how Pixar does it. Seriously, it must be voodoo. It's gotta be.